What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Phase 3 Season of Discovery has been out for about 4 days and so much has happened in these last 4 days. I don't even know if I can get to all of it in this video, but I'm going to do my best to get you guys updated as to what's been going on and what's going to be coming with this week's maintenance. So without further ado, let's dive in. So up first, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate none of the above over on Wild Growth EU for getting the world first Sunken Temple raid cleared. They, along with tons of other raids, were struggling for quite some time, and then Blizzard finally decided to push a hotfix. The problem was that these bosses inside Sunken Temple had so much health, more health than Molten Core bosses, to a point where it was almost impossible. So I'm going to throw it up on the screen right now so you guys can see how big of a nerf they actually pushed out to make Sunken Temple, you know, be able to be cleared. So as for Atal Alarion, there was a 23% health reduction. For the Festering Rot Slime, we had a 43% health reduction. The Atalai Defenders, they reduced their health by 23%. Dream Scythe and Weaver, they reduced by 56%. That is massive. That's over a 50% nerf to health right there. We have Morphaz and Hazaz. The health was reduced by 23%. And the Shade of Aranicus by 33%. So a pretty big nerf so far. Now the raid is still extremely hard to clear. People are still struggling, so I would kind of stay on the edge of your seat here, and I feel like there may be some more nerfs coming. Now, in my opinion, I like this style of a release. I think that the raid should release a bit overtuned, and people should struggle for the first week's lockout, simply because it kind of makes it like an event, right, where people can watch and be like, oh, wow, no one's done it yet. Did they figure it out? Did they figure out these new strats? Whatever. I like the raid being released a bit overtuned. Clearly, though, you know, as time goes by, they will need to nerf it down and make it accessible for more people. So again, big grats to none of the above, and let's move on to our next topic of discussion. There's been some pretty big uh, issues, I guess, with Phase 3 since launch that Blizzard has announced that they noticed, and they're hearing your tweets and complaints, and they will be rolling out a fix earlier this week, most likely tomorrow with Tuesday's maintenance. Uh, some of these issues include occasionally missing loot in dungeons, uh, in era, and in Season of Discovery. That's interesting. Uh, issues interacting with quest objects in the Nightmare Incursions, I'm sure most of you know that if you're trying to get the Prophecy or the Dragon Egg or the Dream Engine, sometimes you cannot loot these items no matter what, and it's just bugged for hours on end. So really good for them to be fixing that because it's kind of game-breaking. Those quests, you can't even complete them if you can't pick up those items. Uh, we have some raid tuning, in particular Hakkar adjustments that were pushed for these already, but we might need to make more changes here if it still seems out of reach for normal guilds, which I was just saying, I think it is kind of out of reach for the average player in the average guild, so we're going to definitely see some more tuning coming there. And then various rune ability issues that will be fixed. I know people were saying Honor Amongst Thieves for Rogues was acting really weird, uh, so I guess we're going to have to wait and see what rune fixes they come out with tomorrow. And speaking of those nightmare incursions, it looks like we're going to be getting some changes again. As most of you already know, last week they nerfed the amount of gold that we were getting from the beginning. Some people were able to farm over a thousand gold in just a couple of hours inside the nightmare incursions. They nerfed that. Uh, it's still a decent way to make gold. It's definitely faster than any other method, especially while you're leveling. But we have some additional changes coming with tomorrow's maintenance and reset. And let's Let's take a look at them. It says, in the first week of Phase 3, Blizzard has observed that players are favoring Nightmare Incursions over other forms of leveling. In order to make additional leveling methods more competitive, Blizzard has announced they will be increasing the experience from the Discoverer's Delight buff and reducing the amount of experience earned from Nightmare Incursions early next week. So basically, we're going to be getting a buff to the XP buff Discoverer's Delight. It's going to be going from 50% up to 75%. So that's going to be a bigger XP buff, but we're going to be getting a nerf to how much experience you get from Nightmare Incursions. Uh, in the post, it says, as a result, we will be making an adjustment on Monday to increase the magnitude of Discoverer's Delight XP buff. We are still working through the percentages. We will adjust, but we are likely going to increase the level 40 to 49 buff from 50% all the way up to 70% or 75% or slightly more. To offset this, we will be reducing the amount of experience gained from mission quests 
in Nightmare Incursions. And they're saying Mission Quest to make it known that killing mobs inside the Nightmare Incursions will still benefit from the Discoverer's Delight buff, so those kill quests might become a lot more lucrative than they were before. As you all know, the method of leveling up the fastest way possible inside Nightmare Incursions has basically been to avoid the kill quests because they have competition, pick up all the loot quests like the Dream Engine, the Dragon Egg, the Prophecy, the Intelligence quests, and then kind of do a big loop, throw yourself out of bounds to teleport back up top, hand them in, and then go again completely ignoring those kill quests, so we may see the meta shift there a little bit now that we're getting a nerf to the experience for, you know, handing in those quests and the experience for killing those mobs is going to be increased. So we're going to have to wait and see there. So up next is a pretty interesting topic here. If any of you have ventured into BRD, I haven't myself yet, but I know people inside my guild have and other people that I've been watching on stream, you would notice that the latter half of BRD is basically inaccessible. All of those bosses are now currently hanging out and getting drunk at the Grim Guzzler, including Emperor. So trying to farm Hand of Justice or Iron Foe is simply not possible in Phase 3, and I know this is going to be a little upsetting for most people, but I do think that it's important to note that Blizzard decided to make these items inaccessible for Phase 3 for a reason. Now, whatever that reason is, we do not know yet, but it is a pretty cool way of them making that part of the dungeon inaccessible, making all these bosses kind of hanging out at the Grim Guzzler drinking and partying instead of just being like putting like a, a you know a blank wall there saying like hey you know we can't walk in here yet you're not level 51 or whatever um, but other bosses that weren't spotted there but likely are not available according to Wowhead are the Golem Lord, Argelmok, Hurley, Black Breath, Plugger, Sprazring, Magmus and chest of the seven. And the bosses that you can see hanging out at the Grim Guzzler, clearly we have Emperor, we have Princess, we have Angerforge, Phalanx, and Belgar. For our next topic of discussion, we wanna talk a little bit about the Wild Gods quest rewards, the pre-raid gear, and the Dark Moon cards that you can get from using these wild offerings. Basically, the Wild Gods quest line is super important for a lot of people. It gives you a lot of pre-raid best in slot gear. And if you take a look, the Band of the Wilds with the 20 attack power, 1% hit, the Breath of the Beast Trinket with one crit, one hit on it, the Crown of the Dreamweaver with 55 plus healing, the Court of the Untamed with 14 spell damage and 1% hit for our casters, the nice Paladin or Shaman spell damage shield, Defender of the Wilds, and the God Slayer's Greaves plate boots with 14 strength, 14 agility. Some of this gear is just too hard to pass up. I'm going to be making a video showing you guys how to unlock this vendor and to you know, purchase this gear because this is going to be pre for most people. But for just a quick overview, you're going to walk into Fellwood and on the right hand side where the little tents are in the campsite, you're going to talk to the Shadow Tooth Emissary. She's going to have a quest for you called the Wild Gods. Now for the next part, you're going to need to either have this yourself or someone in your group is going to need it. It is the Wild Whisper Drought. This drops off the elite trolls in Jintha Allure inside the hinterlands. So once you or someone in your party has that wild whisper drought, you're going to head into RFD. You're going to clear the instance up to the old boss. You're going to clear the old boss and then drink or have someone in your group drink that wild whisper drought to spawn the spirit of Agamagon. Then everyone in the group is going to speak to him and get a quest and Agamagon's roar. After doing that, you're set and you can now start farming wild offerings. You can farm wild offerings inside Zulfarak, Maradon, and Black rock depths and from my experience the fastest way to do it is princess runs inside mara you can do them between six to eight minutes they're really fast you can farm up to five wild offerings per hour just because of the lockout and it's super easy just remember that to unlock her as a vendor you do need to hand your first three wild offerings into her and then anything after that will, you will be using for currency to purchase these items the trinket and the ring are 12 wild offerings i'm pretty sure so for me i I know I need at least 24 after that three, so a total of 27. So basically 27 princess runs inside Mara. It sounds a little more daunting than it actually is. It's really fast. You know, if you just do five and then go off and do some other stuff while you're locked out, go back, do another five. It's really not as bad as you would think. And that gear is just really 
really strong. Up next, we want to talk about the world buff and where you can get it. The new phase three world buff, Fervor of the Temple Explorer, which gives you 5% crit, 65 spell damage, and all stats increase by 8% for two hours, now drops on Yojamba Isle or in Booty Bay. You can get it in either of the locations. When you're inside Sunken Temple, when you defeat the Avatar of Hakkar, you can loot the Scapula of the Fallen Avatar, which will give you a quest called a Broken Ritual, which then allows you to hand this in to drop the buff and pick up one of these beautiful Drake Claw Band rings. These are epic rings and they look really, really good powerful so you're gonna want to eventually get your hands on one of these up next we actually have gotten some new exalted rewards with the waylaid supplies vendor we are getting an 18 slot bag combined on account helmets and ladra's inanimator which is a trinket that if you use it you become inanimate but one item that really sticks out to me here for the exalted rep with waylaid supplies is the supply expediter uh, this item basically is a bind on account trinket that you could send to another character and it has an equip effect that says you sometimes find additional waylaid supplies from enemies. So maybe it doubles your chances of getting waylaid supplies, which would be really nice to kind of boost this rep up on an alt pretty quick. And then the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that we have found a new engineering quest line inside Season of Discovery to learn the opposite specialization from what you chose. So if you chose Goblet Engineering, which most people do for the Sappers, you can now also become a Gnomish Engineer with a pretty big quest line. But I'm not going to go into that right now because it's a lot of details, but it is out there. You can look it up if you want to do it. If you are an engineer, I will be doing it myself today, recording all the footage and then putting a guide together for you guys. So if you want to just wait and follow along a guide, feel free to do that. That video will probably be out tomorrow or the day after. But yeah, that's it, guys. That's all the updates I've got for you today. There's been so much going on the past three days. I'm trying to play and experience all this stuff so that I can relay it to everyone and make my guides. Um, so I forgive me for not pumping out content every couple of hours uh, during this time, but I'm just trying to do everything as fast as possible so I can relay accurate information to everybody. But I'm excited. Tonight, Monday, April 8th, is our first guild sunken temple we're gonna see how far we can get so if you want to come hang out and watch that it's gonna be live over on twitch.tv slash hammer dance it's gonna be a good time i'm sure we're gonna wipe a ton but we're gonna have fun doing it. but anyways guys thank you all so much if you enjoyed this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel and once again thank you all so much for watching and listening in i'll see you all in the next one